uh, was going to do a little demonstration of this. Hi, again, I'm Mark Geiger. We're with the Fairfax Heart League. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Give me a moment for tip. Let me step forward as we're dealing with some technical challenges. So let's talk about the basic properties of, um, of alternative media. So soft pastels, which you're probably most familiar with, are chalk-like material with limited binder. Uh, oil pastels are pigments set into a wax-like organic matrix. And watercolor, of course, is pigment, pigment in a water-soluble media. Oil is pigment in an organic solvent media. And acrylics are a plant, pigment in a plasticized media, which is initially water-soluble until beautiful. set. Uh, OK. Uh, in terms of the relative ease of use, uh, soft pastels are pretty easy, except they smear easily, which uh, can complicate things. Oil pastels uh, are a little bit less easy to smear. The initial versions were actually developed for children in Japan. Uh, they're still messy, but uh, cleanable. What's a Zoom call the, our class I signed up for? Oh, okay. One issue is the color mixture yeah. requires near exact color. So you may need uh, more colors than you uh, might otherwise think. So watercolor uh, is easy, but you need to work in reverse with colors. In other words, the, you need to put down the brightest colors first, uh, whereas with the other media, you can put down the darker colors first and then add light colors over top. Uh, there's some limitations with oil pastels, but in general, you can use it, them in any order you need. Uh, oil can be more difficult to work with uh, and it takes more, more materials. Just a moment, let me just finish this. A in terms of background media, you need the paper and past oil pastels are paper and oil pastels are all from the same paper, but high grade colored paper. So consider also hot press uh, watercolor paper, watercolor, watercolor paper, hot or cold press, oil is canvas and acrylics are uh, canvas. Excuse me if there's some oversimplifications here. Uh, in terms of relative cost, uh, oil pastels are relatively low, but good materials are pricey. Same with um, oil pastels. And because you need a near exact match with the color, you may need more colors than you initially thought. Watercolors are about mid-priced and oils can be expensive as can acrylics. Okay, uh, We're going to go to see if I can show some of the materials. Do you want to just, uh, are you ready? Okay. Again, for those that got, may have arrived uh, on a delayed basis, I am Mark Geiger with the Fairfax Art League. We're talking about the materials for oil pastels. And of course, the background is the uh, papers that you'll need. So obviously, you're going to do some initial drawing. Uh, including probably a setup for your later oil pastel. We'll get to this one later. Uh, you'll You're talking, let me go back a step to talking about the materials. Uh, I, I think we may not be able to accomplish the video, but I have some basic pictorial information which should at least in part substitute for that. So I, I do apologize. We talked about the materials, at least for the demonstration, which would be a basic set of uh, oil pastels, typically costing about five to $10, come in packs of six to 12. So 
as an artist, you begin by drawing. And so your beginning material is a sketch pad. Uh, whatever size you're used to, I'd suggest like eight by 10 or bigger. Uh, then for pastels, you're gonna use pastel paper or charcoal paper. It's most typically gray, but it also comes in colors, which can provide a great background. Uh, you wanna use the heaviest weight that you can. I, I was able to get some uh, 98 pound weight. If you can get that, it's great. Uh, but the heavier, the better. With uh, some people use um, uh, watercolor paper. My suggestion would be uh, to use uh, hot press because it's a little bit smoother and at least 140 pound weight. It tolerates more uh, rough use, scratching and uh, artistic work than does uh, the lighter pastel paper. Start with a mat and a paper of the same size. So in order to avoid the expense and aggravation of custom matting and framing, you get the mat and the drawing paper of the same size. One takes the mat, puts it down on the paper, and then uh, sketches the interior. One then co covers the outline of the interior with a more expensive architect's tape. The masking tape is cheaper, but it'll tear up your paper. So you want to use the uh, architect's tape, which is designed to peel off. For those that are working outdoors or with larger paper, and you can't take a mat with you, you pre-cut the inside. In this case, we have um, 16 and a half, 16 times 20 uh, paper, which is a pretty common size. And then the interior size of that is um, 10 and a half by 13 and a half. And there's a website on the presentation which shows you the common sizes of um, uh, frames, mats, and the interior cutout. You then take the uh, template, place it on your paper, and you can usually visually figure out where that cutout goes. And then you do an outline in pencil of your color. And then you tape the inside with uh, architect's tape. And what you then have is a working surface inside the paper where you can uh, paint and then put this into a uh, uh, mat and pre-frame it. You probably also want a drawing board. Uh, and of course the architect's tape and some basic pencils, uh, light pencils like an H or HB for the initial drawing and heavier pencils like um, 2B or 4B for shading studies. And then for blending, you want the tortolone or the uh, blending stick, Q-tips, and for some additional color, you can use something as simple as chalk or Conti crayons. You have the solvent, Gamasol, and a container to put it in, and a brush that's maybe uh, half an inch or an inch wide. And of course, you're gonna make a, a little bit of a mess, so you have paper towels and these Kleenex wet wipes. These are not the ones that do sterilization, but just for cleanup, uh, baby wipes work very well. Now, for those that get really enthusiastic, of course, we go over to the right side of the table. And again, let me check on the visuals. How are they doing? Good. Okay. Uh, so of course you'll get, like anybody who gets enthusiastic, a bigger set of stuff. In this case, it's 36 Craypot crayons. They make them in, I think, up to 48 op, 48 colors. Um, Pentel is also pretty good. The best uh, seem to be Sennelier. Pass, um, 
Picasso actually began uh, modern oil pastels and got his colleague Senillier to um, do uh, artist quality sets of oil pastels and they're still doing that. Now, Senillier also sells individual um, oil pastels. In this case, I have white and blue because they use a lot of that for the sky, but you can get flesh colored or other specific colors uh, for whatever you're doing. You may also want some sketching crayons, which are gray. Gray studies are an important part of that. And uh, since you're making mistakes, you want a gum eraser for cleanup of the either the charcoal or pencil. And this black eraser is very good. It's just called a black eraser. And it will uh, take up some of the oil pastels. The other good material for cleaning up oil pastels or even regular pastels is Wonder Bread or any of the other uh, low nutrient, high antioxidant um, kind of bakery goods, which um, uh, are unhealthy, but very good for picking up um, uh, oil pastels or regular pastels. And then of course, blending sticks, you may wanna sharpen your pencils or even cut off parts of your um, pastels. So you have a, you can um, make, make them uh, apply to smaller areas. You may want a knife for that, have an X-Acto knife. And of course, rags, more solvent and the ubiquitous color wheel and a grayscale because you're doing, you may wind up doing some value studies before you um, do your, uh, your pastels or in combination with your pastels. And to preserve the pastels, uh, wax paper is a very good, good protector. You can use acetate as well, but wax paper is on sale cheap at the um, local grocery store and small amounts of a workable fixative. That's your materials. Okay. Let me reverse field here. We went through the matting and framing. Do I need a, a, any further review on the selection of matting and framing? No. Okay, good. So we'll, um, uh, one of the things you want to look at is the website at the bottom of this presentation for common um, mat and frame sizes. Okay, uh, now we're gonna look at rapid drawings for scene layout. I owe the, these concepts to San, Sandra Gobar and I have her website on the bottom. Uh, so this is about a 10 minute way to figure out and your perspective and do some preliminary drawings. I got the video working. All right, technical success. Uh, we got the video working. We're gonna to diverge to that for, for the demonstration in about uh, three minutes. Great. Okay. Uh, so you do a one minute sketch, believe it or not, one minute, and then a 45 second quick look now I substitute a shading study and then a 15 second, no kidding, gesture drawing. And then another uh, 30 or 40 second quick look where you don't look at your paper and only look at the scene or at least try to. That's why it's a little bit um, blurry down. Okay. okay. Um, and then a final one minute sketch. So here's an example of that. And you'll notice that these do not look refined and they're not intended to. Now, the, the shading study is useful because it tells you how di dark the pastels need to be. And so you have the shades at the bottom here 
And then you notice uh, I'm uh, drawing by the numbers. I've tried to reproduce some of the intensity of the shading in, in some of these uh, initial diagrams. This, this takes more than the uh, uh, a minute that Sandra Gobar would suggest, but I, I need the help. So I take a few minutes to do this. So here's another example of the same technique on a, a church near where I work. Uh, then you're ready for the oil pastel part of things. And you've done the initial sketch and maybe some color and intensity scales. The first thing you're gonna do is look at large background areas and you're likely to use a graded wash. It's very similar to watercolors, but instead of water, one uses a, a solvent and then supporting details with a pastel stick. Uh, again, as vibrant colors as you can manage. And uh, we're gonna do a quick demonstration. And let's try to set this up for camera sharing. And I'm gonna use, come on. I'm not trying to fool around. So Alexandra? Yeah. Are we seeing, we need to be able to see the camera screen. Well, are you gonna do this? Or? I'm gonna to try to do it. Okay. Uh, so we're spending a day at the beach and um, have, to, so we have a preliminary sketch. And of course we've done all the value studies and uh, come up with a very simple sketch for um, our day at the beach. And we said, but let's color the clouds first uh, because of the way watercolors and oil pastels work, we need to have some background white. And watercolor, one would mask these out. And you could also do the same masking with oil, with oil pastels, but you'd need watercolor paper to withstand the, um, withstand the stress of that. Now, one is going to do a wash, but this is an upside down wash because it's lighter on the bottom and darker on the top. So one starts with white or light colors on the bottom. And then adds different, uh, a different amount you can see as you get to the top of the sky, it gets darker. So I've taken out the solvent and I'm using, it doesn't take very much. So I'm just using the top of the waste container and get to work upside down and we begin to blend. We're beginning to blend the sky. Uh, this is a little bit less sophisticated than I'd normally do because of time and computer challenges. But you can see that you have a pretty well blended sky. And now it's time to do the, um, one goes through a very similar process with the, um, with, with the water. You know how it's lighter in the background and gets darker as you get closer to the shore. So you start with a light green And then you're starting to add because you're getting a darker green as you get closer to the shore. 
you add more of that grain. And because the sky is reflected in this, you blend a little bit of sky in. And you work vertically so that the um, materials are blended and you do more blending at the back and less in the front and you use tend to use a larger brush as you get to the um, front of the picture. So what you have is a beach scene. Now, normally your beach scenes would be done in a more relaxed way. With hold up, hold up, hold up. Yes, and closer, closer. It's coming along very nicely, Mark. Okay. Yes, you see it like that, yeah. Good, and then you can add some details like um, this ship in the background and the uh, woman in the foreground and the umbrella. So this is where you could add some colors and um, get some supplemental details. So we have this ship in the background Mark, do you paint outside or do you paint from a uh, photograph? Um, I typically try to paint on scene, but sometimes, you know, um, you, you paint from photographs as well. It's a combination, but there are some things you can see while you're there that come out better. Okay. Ending than what you're seeing and a more relaxed um, condition, but this is for purposes of demonstration and for purposes of modesty, we're gonna give this woman a bathing suit. <laughs> and color her hair. Uh, and we'll also add some colors on the beach. Which we can then blend. And we'll do some blending with the beach colors. He's just getting started. He had technical difficulties, but it's going good. Okay. And so the, the intent of course here is not to produce a, a large scale marketable work, but to demonstrate some of the basic ideas. D does this give you a feeling for the use of um, blending material. Yes. Okay, great. And at this point, you want to clean out your brushes and you can add important details. And there are in it, there are um, pastel pencils, which one could use for adding um, supplemental details. And I, I wanna let you know that I used the um, low cost set for purposes of this demonstration. So you can be similarly encouraged. Okay. Um, if you have more than five minutes, you'll probably do a more sophisticated job. But this was for demonstrating some of the um, basic techniques and I appreciate everybody's patience. Thank you again for your patience. So let me, 
Okay. Okay, so to look at some work, and, and uh, this is a uh, fall on Burke Lake and some things to take away are, you notice the architect's tape here that frames the picture and use of colored paper. Uh, in this case for the soil, it makes it way easier than um, uh, trying to reproduce that color. And the paper is permitted to, to uh, show through. And you notice the wash goes from the horizon, from the top of the sky to the horizon. And of course you can turn the paper over uh, if you do two washes. The um, trees tend to be done, the foliage tends to be done as masses. Uh, and details are usually done in, um, pastel pencil and black pencils. And you can see there's some evidence of wax paper, which is used to protect the work. Uh, and oh, this is a different picture. You notice the color scales, which help you get the shading right. And they won't show up after um, uh, matting because your mat's gonna be right here, but this helps keep you straight. Uh, you can see the wash for the sky and the masses of colors. The eye will do a lot to differentiate uh, these masses and you can add the bright colors first and then supporting details um, uh, in darker pencil later. And again, the brown paper is allowed to show through. Okay, some local scenes. Uh, let me leave some, some time for questions. I had a question. Yes, I'll do my best. Um, I actually am pretty happy with what I did here, but the one thing I'm wondering is, um, well, for example, when I was doing the top of the sky, it, it, I was doing like lines and I was scratch, scribbling, scribbling, scribbling. And when I blended it, I don't really get rid of all those lines. And I'm just wondering, is that where you put a dab of gam. I mean, I don't know how to smooth it out better. Maybe this is just the way it's supposed to be, but uh, it just seems like it's a little bit scribbly. Oh, uh, so can you say one, one way to partly deal with that is to use more color than you think you need. You, okay. Uh, yeah, I could show you what I'm talking about. Yes. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, um, I don't know if you can, there we go. Oh, okay. See? Yeah, so, so my guess is that you might have wanted to add too much of this expensive color. <laughs> Probably. Huh. Well, my other problem is I usually work in water cleanup oils, Windsor Newton or Cobra, and so I don't, I usually work in water cleanup oils. So I didn't want to ruin a bunch of my brushes. I don't have the solvent to clean my brushes. Right, right. I, I would just buy, my, my suggestion might be just to buy a small container of Gamasol because it goes a long way. Uh huh. And um, uh, then de dedicate a, two or three brushes. Yeah. Uh, and you probably don't need the best brushes to smooth this stuff out. Right. Well, that's you know, what that's I was using an old brush that I actually bought at an estate sale. <laughs> okay. And it's you very may, old. You might want to go one up from that. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's well, maybe. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, this was my okay. very first attempt and I'm not unhappy with it. So I think it worked out. Pretty I think well. it's great. I think it's well, thank great. you. Okay. Mark, could you hold up your drawing again, please? Oh, sure. Um, Alt T, uh, Alt S. Hang on for just a moment. Uh, yeah. Because as you can tell, this is not my most impressive oil pastel, but it's intended just to get the ideas across. I wanted to see how you 
uh, delineated the sea from the sky. That's what. Okay. Um, it's just well, the color it, and a darker line type of thing, or? Yeah, so to tell you the truth, in real life, sometimes this, the sea and the, where the sea starts and the sky ends mm. is difficult to tell. Uh, and sometimes the clouds and at the horizon make it very difficult to know exactly where that horizon is. Mm. And, and you can use the properties of oil pastels or oils to demonstrate that effect, sort of like Turner did. He, he didn't use, I don't think he used Oil pastels hadn't been invented, but he had some of that effect. With your clouds, do you mean to have the the lines that denote the clouds be so bold, or is that just because? Oh no, doing... that was just for purposes of demonstration. Okay, okay. Normally, they'd be like real, um, almost invisibly light. Yes. And you know, th this was just to get the idea across. I get it. Thank you. Yeah. I can show you some other clouds where, give me just a moment. See how um, in, in this one, mm. the clouds are sort of fuzzy as, as they were in real life. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's nice. Yeah, well, thank mm. you. And uh, here's, here's a good example of how everything blends. This is uh, Lindra. Linda. Um, oh, Bergen. wow. <laughs> that, Isn't that awesome? Beautiful. beautiful. How did she get the, the background color at the top of the sky? How do you get it so smooth and, you know, even? I you suspect, know I suspect that she had several layers and used solvent in a very um, judicious way. To make it dissolve more. Right, right. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. And one of the other things you notice in the field, these, these sort of details, there's probably a general layer and then some supporting details with pastel crayons. And it sort of mirrors what happens in real life. Like the background is sort of fuzzy and then the foreground is a, has a little bit, is a little bit sharper in terms of details. Yes see if there's anything else. And then um, the other thing I was going to say is that the Favs would have loved um, oil pastels. Mm -hmm. Use bright colors and bold patterns. Yep. Uh, and, and for portraits, a lot of people do portraits in pastels and uh -huh. oil pastels lend themselves to that sort of blending of shading of, of skin. You know, with the masses being um, uh, well blended, and they're not uh -huh. the, the advantage of oil pastels is they're not quite as fragile as um, uh, soft pastels. From a toxicity standpoint, uh, you don't have loose, potentially hazardous pigment that you can blow around easily. Mm -hmm. uh, and then here's some of Picasso's work you can do a lot of masses of colors. I hope I'm not going through this too fast, but I wanted to show some of the ways that the media can be used. And a lot of these have the characteristics of oils uh, because it's the same, it's using the media to get the concept across as opposed to um, the other way around. And some additional thoughts or you don't you need to use all the paper. And just like the impressionists, you can let the eye do the blending as, as this person did using this um, lion. Mm -hmm. And th the same thing works for things like autumn colored leaves or colors of clothing. And there's a lot of work that one can do for still lives. And the realism is um, remarkable. Here's Rachel Wiseman. And I'm not, it, the concept here is that it's, uh, you can certainly tell which was 
the uh, uh, still life in which is the um, painting, but uh, the realism can be uh, significant. And you can use some very painterly techniques. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to, just for finishing up and then I'll get to the questions. For finishing up, um, you wanna protect your painting with wax paper and possibly acetate initially, and then perhaps light fixative. Uh, the issue is that don't use too much because it can affect the color. And sometimes you can use it on the reverse side of the paper, especially for soft pastels. And you want to double mat with a spacer and non-static glass. Mm -hmm. And of course, don't let the glass touch the painting. Right. Now, uh, turn it on for questions. When you say wax paper, Mark, what, what, how do you do that? Um, uh, just buy it in the store and you can, uh, you just put the wax paper immediately over the um, oil pastel when you, when you finish working. Wait a second. We'll, we'll come to one that has some wax paper protection. Here, can you see the wax paper? Yes. And it's just the painting shows through. Yeah, I did. I did. And then after a while, you remove it. Is it? Pardon? After a while, you remove the paper. Uh, yes. If you're going to if you if, if you're going to frame it, it, you're not going to frame it with a wax paper. Okay, got it. Got it. Well, wax paper is pretty remarkable. I have done some yeah. of my oil paintings and then put them in the car when they're, st I have done some oil paintings and then I want to bring them from a place south and bring them home here to Virginia and they're still damp. And I just, I attach wax paper with tape to the back of the canvas and put it over the canvas. Mm. I tried it first time just because I thought, what can I do? What can I do? Mm. I was amazed. It didn't stick to the paint. Right. And I just got home, I took the wax paper off and the paintings hadn't been messed up at all. So wax paper is pretty remarkable. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's very useful to know. <laughs> well, yeah, because we have a place down in South Carolina, which is where I do most of my painting. And then sometimes I wanna bring a painting home, but I don't wanna leave it for two months and pick it up two months from now. I wanna bring it home now. Yeah. And the first time I tried that, I thought, well, what can I put over this? What can I protect it with? in a very crowded car. Yes. And so I basically was trying things and I tried the wax paper first, thank goodness. And I was amazed, amazed when I took them out of the box, none of them had stuck to the wax paper and it was just amazing. Oh, great. So I, I, I'm very much in favor of using wax paper to protect things. Yeah, uh, sometimes the other people, uh, other things people do or have like a frame. Um, you know how you have in the dishwasher, you have, um, spacers which prevent the dishes from touching each other one can make sort of a frame of the same type they do make frames that are but they're specific sizes when you're painting on canvas they make frames right. where you can attach a picture to one side and a picture to the other side and it holds it in place and it doesn't touch the paint yeah but you have to be very specific about the size it has to be matching the, the canvas right right so you have to buy you have to buy more than one frame because you can only put two paintings in one frame and they both have to be eight by tens or eleven by twelve. You know, I mean, they have to be whatever the size is. Right, right. Uh, one of the things uh, for for oil painting, I use the, this French easel and it has a um, a clip on device, or you can clamp the painting to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course, you can't touch anything but right. at least you've clamped your painting to something. And of course you put it facing up in the car on the way home. Yeah, that's true. Um, and so let's see if I can just sort of summarize. Oil pastels are a low class, class, low cost and rapid means of exploring shading and total studies are preliminary. I didn't get to get into that too much, but you know, they, they can, be a study or a media on their own right. And some obviously common alternatives include portraits, landscapes, and still lives. And 
it's just another way to explore color, shade, and composition. And the, um, the presentation has some web links with uh, history and uh, supplemental background and a supply list for new enthusiasts. Uh, let me open it up for um, questions then. Yeah, but anyhow, thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. This was this was really wonderful. Oh, thank you. Oh, you too. Thank you very much. Okay.